Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I am Hashem Ali Khan. So last videos I have completed five accounting standards. AS1 disclosure of accounting policies. AS2 valuation of inventories. AS3 cash flow statement. AS4 contingencies and events occurring after the balance sheet date. AS5 the net profit or loss for the period prior period items and change in accounting policies. These five accounting standards I have so far completed in the previous videos. Accounting standard six that is depreciation. This accounting standard is withdrawn by ICAI and the provisions for depreciation will be included in accounting standard 10. So presently we don't have accounting standard 6 that is depreciation. Now the next accounting standard is AS7 that is construction accounting for construction contracts. So in this AS7 I am going to explain you what the provisions given by AS7 regarding the accounting for construction contract. So before starting the explanation on this accounting standard, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain all the points. Now, AS7, the title of this accounting standard is accounting for constructional contracts so the purpose of making this AS7 is the it will be helpful to the contractors who are engaged in constructional activity how to present the financial statement of constructional business that is the main purpose of this accounting standard now first of all AS7 prescribes the principles of accounting for construction of contract in the financial statement of contractors. Just like every other business, the, the contractors, the constructional contractors, they will make the financial statements. So how to prepare the financial statements, how to disclose the items of constructional business in the financial statements, that will be explained by this accounting standard is the focus of the accounting standard is on the principles of revenue recognition of the contractors the the business the constructional business is entirely different the main point here is the business the contract will go for a number of years the problem is to recognize the revenue how much revenue should be recognized for the current accounting period because the revenue will be spreaded throughout the accounting construction period the construction period will go for a different accounting periods it will not be completed within one or two months or six months it may run for more than one year so the problem of revenue recognition that is the main problem to overcome that this accounting standard is given now first point a construction contract is a contract spec uh, specifically negotiated for construction of an asset first of all you must know the meaning of the term construction the construction contract is a contract specifically negotiated for the construction of an asset construction of an asset or closely interrelated or combination of asset not only of single asset but also it is a contract special specifically negotiated for a combination of asset either for a particular asset or a combination of assets that are closely interrelated or interdependent in terms of their design in terms of the technology in terms of functions or their ultimate purpose or use so this paragraph explain you the meaning of the term construction contract it is a contract negotiated specifically to construct an asset or a combination of asset combination of asset next is a construction contract may be negotiated for a construction of a single asset such as here i have given the examples 
because constructional contract means a contract for a single asset or a combination of different contracts single asset what are the example of single asset such as making a bridge making a building dam pipeline road ship or tunnel these are the examples of single constructional contract now apart from that a construction contract may also be also deal with the construction of a number of assets which are closely interrelated not only for a single construction contract but a combination of more than one asset which are interrelated or interdependent in terms of design in terms of technology in terms of functions or uh, their ultimate purpose or use examples of this combination of assets are construction of refineries and other complex pieces of plant and equipment suppose a huge contract is uh, bifurcated into a number of parts like in refineries or complex project construction like plant or equipment there we have a number of combination of contracts which are interrelated interdependent so all these things will come within the ambit of constructional contracts now what is the main feature of this constructional contract the main feature is the uh, period of completion of the construct uh, construction of the contract will run over different accounting periods for example a contract was entered into a particular year but in that year itself the contract will not be completed the contract may take 2 years or 3 years or 4 years so more accounting periods to complete the contract that is the main feature so main feature of construction contract is that in most contract the date at which the contract is secured and the date when the contract is completed fall in different accounting periods date of starting the uh, contract and date of completing the contract will fall in different accounting periods now the main problems relating to construction contract is allocation of revenue and related cost to accounting period over the duration of the contract there is a peculiarity in the business of construction contracts because we have to recognize how much is the revenue and how much is the cost in a particular accounting period for example a constructional contract will go for 3 years first year second year third year at the end of 3 years the contract was completed now there is a question regarding how much revenue to be charged in first year how much cost to be charged in the first year similarly how much revenue to be recognized in second year and how much cost to be recognized so until and unless we recognize the revenue and we recognize the cost we cannot be able to ascertain the profit on that constructional activity so recognition of revenue and recognition of the cost is the main problem in constructional activity now types of construction contract broadly we have three types of construction contract the first is fixed price contract in this fixed price contract at the time of negotiation between the contractor and the contractee a fixed amount is specified example the contractor and contractee has agreed that the price of the contract is rupees 50 lakh so 50 lakh is the contract price that is the negotiated price between the contractor and the contractee second is cost, uh, cost plus contract in this cost plus contract the contractee says to the contractor that whatever cost you have incurred in the construction on that cost let it be 10% or 20% I will give you the return profit so in a particular year the contractor has spent 8 lakh rupees in the first year 8 lakh rupees he has spent so 10% of 8 lakh 80,000 rupees is the profit that will be given so 8 lakh 80,000 rupees should be paid by the contractee to the contractor third one hybrid contracts hybrid means 
combined combination it's a combination of fixed price contract and cost plus contract some features of fixed contract fixed price contract and some features of cost plus contract is called hybrid contracts these are the three types of contracts now combining and segment con segmenting construction contracts combining and segmenting construction contract the first one the provision of as7 apply to each contract separately a contractor may have different contracts on hand he is building different i mean construction activity at one side he is uh, i mean putting a bridge another side putting a road another side he is constructing a multi uh, i mean a uh, floored building like this different contracts he is having so as7 will apply on each contract separately that first point second however if a group of contracts either with single or multiple customers is considered as a single contract sometimes a contractor will enter into a contract with multiple customers that means he has agreed to construct a huge apartments having different flats each flat one different customer is there the contractor is entering into different contracts with each customer but as7 says all the contracts will be combined and will be treated as a single contract it's a single contract now a uh, single package all contracts with the group are closely interlinked and are executed concurrently because all the construction activity will be taken place at one site and all are interrelated so instead of treating all the flats as different contracts the complete uh, i mean package will be treated as a single contract now construction of each contract is considered as separate contract only if separate proposal have been received if there is a separate uh, i mean proposal for each uh, contract it will be treated as a separate contract then next one is percentage completion method <coughs> normally a contract will be rarely completed within one accounting period normally the contract will be completed in different accounting periods now the question will arise how much percentage work has been done how much revenue should be recognized how much cost should be identified and measured so it's a complex problem so construction contract are mostly long term that means it's spread over a number of years that is that take more than one accounting year to complete this means the fixed outcome the final outcome profit or loss of a con construction contract can be determined only after the number of years from the year a commencement of construction completion if the contractor wants to find out how much profit we have earned on a particular contract he has to wait till the completion of the contract only on the completion of the contract he can be able to know how much profit he has earned but it is nevertheless possible to recognize revenue annually in proportion to progress of work to be matched with the corresponding construction cost incurred in that year but alternatively one more method is there percentage completion method in this percentage completion method it is possible to find out how much is the revenue and how much is the cost to be recognized on the work in progress example the construction co contract the const the construction activity was started on 1st january 2020 1st january 2020 the activity was started now at the end of the year 31st december only 40% work of the complete contract has been completed now it is possible to recognize how much cost we have incurred on this 40% work and how much re revenue can be recognized for this 40% of work completed so it is possible to recognize the revenue and cost for the work which is completed now this method of accounting called the stage of completion method or percentage completion method 
provides useful information to the extent of contract activity and performance during an accounting period. So this method, percentage completion method, can be conveniently applied to a construction contract where we can easily find out how much revenue and how much cost incurred. Once the revenue and cost incurred can be identified and measured, easily we can be able to find out the profit. Then AS7 prescribes that percentage completion method should not be used unless it is possible to make a reasonable estimate of the final outcome of the contract. If the contractor is sure that he can be able to estimate the revenue and cost, then only he should go for this uh, percentage completion method. Otherwise, AS7 suggests to go for the completion of the contract. That means ascertain the profit or loss only on the completion of the contract, not on the work in progress. So left, the AS7 has left to the contractors whether you can be able to ascertain or not. If you are unable to ascertain the revenue and cost, then find out on the completion. Otherwise, if you are confident in ascertaining the revenue and cost, then you can follow the method, completion, percentage completion method. AS7 provides that whenever the contract cost is expected to exceed the total contract revenue, the loss should be recognized as immediately. One point AS7 has given. The contractor, if we see that the construction cost is more than revenue, when cost is more than revenue, he is incurring loss. So AS7 says, whenever in a particular accounting year, if the cost is more than the revenue, so whatever loss is there, immediately recognize the loss in that particular year. In the same year, recognize the loss. That is the provision given. Now, direct uh, contract cost. What are the different types of cost incurred by the contractor? We can divide it into three categories. Direct cost. The cost which is specifically incurred on a contract. Like the material consumed at site. The labor at site or some expenses which are exclusively incurred on the site are called direct cost. Then allocated cost are the indirect cost. The cost which is not specifically related to the particular contract, but the cost which is incurred on all the contracts. A common cost. So the common cost or uh, the cost which, is, which can be allocated are called indirect cost. Example, the management expenses, the insurance. So some examples are there which are incurred not on a particular contract but on all the contracts. On a suitable method, this indirect cost should be allocated, distributed among different contracts. The chargeable cost. The chargeable cost are those costs which should be charged on the customer, on the contractee according to his requirement. Example, at the time of contract, it was not decided to make a particular room. But later on, the contract is say we will pay you separate cost. We will pay you separate cost if you make this room. So on the request of the customer, on the request of the contractee, the contractor is incurring some cost. That is called chargeable cost. So these are the three types of cost. Now revenue, contractor revenue. The initial amount of the revenue agreed in the contract. At the time of negotiation, how much is the revenue to be charged by the contractor from the contractee? Suppose I am the contractee, I want a building to be constructed and you are the contractor. And I have agreed that you make the complete building, I am going to pay you 50 lakh rupees. So 50 lakh rupees I am giving, contract T is giving to the contractor. That is the initial revenue de decided. Right? Secondly, variation in contract work claims and incentive payment. <coughs> variation in the contract work. In the beginning, there was a negotiation between the contract T and the contractor that the asset should be in such a specification. Later on, 
the contractee wants some changes, some variations in the specification. In that case, the contractor will say that you have to pay separate amount for this variation because you are changing the plan. Original plan, I have to make the changes. So variation expenses you have to pay. Similarly, claims. Some claims have to be made for extra work and incentive. Some incentive will be received. So variation amount, claims amount, incentive amount. These are the different amounts which will be received by the contractor from the contractee. All these are the revenues. Next, disclosure. Finally, of this accounting standard, you have to write the disclosure in examination. What is the disclosure? An enterprise should disclose. Every enterprise which is engaged in constructional activity, they have to disclose in the financial statements what uh, the amount of contract revenue recognized as revenue in the period. How much is the amount of revenue which should be recognized as revenue in the accounting period? Example, the negotiated price of the contract is 50 lakh rupees. But out of 50 lakh rupees, how much money has been received from the contractee and how much should be recognized as revenue in the accounting period? First one, this should be disclosed. Secondly, the method used to determine the contract revenue recognized in the period. There are different methods of recognizing the revenue for the period. How much revenue should be recognized as current year's revenue? What method we have applied? That method of revenue recognition should be disclosed in the financial statements. Thirdly, the method used to determine the stage of completion of contract in the progress. If the work in progress, work is still going on, so on what basis we have decided how much percentage of work has been completed? What is the method used to ascertain the percentage of completion of work? That method should also be disclosed. Now an enterprise should disclose following in respect of contracts in progress at the reporting date. On the reporting date, if the work is still going on, work in progress, for those enterprises, these are the disclosure. The first one, aggregate amount of cost incurred and recognized profits up to the reporting date. Up to the reporting date means the last date of the accounting period. So up to the reporting date, <coughs> how much revenue and how much cost are incurred so that we can be able to find out how much is the profit. The amount of advances received. How much advance amount has been received from the contractee and how much are the retentions? Normally, whatever work certified, that amount will not be paid by the contractee. Some amount will be retained. In the agreement, it will be written that 80% of work certified will be paid by the contractee. So, I am the contractee, you are contractor. At the end of the accounting year, you will say, that 40% work has been done. So 50 lakh rupees is the contract price. 40% work has been done. So 40% of 50 lakh, 20 lakh. So 20 lakh rupees work, uh, work has been completed. But 20 lakh rupees will not be paid by the, contra by the contractee. So agreement it will be written. Retention amount. Suppose 20% will be retained. 20% will be retained. So how much work is completed? 40 lakh rupees worth as work has been completed. How 40 lakh? 50 percent, 40 percent, 40 percent of 50 lakh. So 50 lakh into 40 percent. So 5 for the 20. So 20 lakh. So 20 lakh rupees is the work certified. But according to agreement, contract you will retain 20 percent. So 20% of 20 lakh, 20% of 20 lakh is 4 lakh. The 4 lakh rupees is the retention money. So out of 20 lakh, 4 lakh rupees is retained. 16 lakh rupees will be paid by the contractee to the contractor. So these are the things which should be disclosed in the financial statements by an enterprise for the contract which are incomplete. 
तो दीज आर द पॉइंट विच यू हैव टू रिमेंबर एंड राइट इन एग्जामिनेशन इफ ए क्वेश्चन अपियर्स फॉर एक्सप्लेन द प्रोविजन रिगार्डिंग ए एस सेवन accounting for construction contract so inshallah we will continue the next accounting standard in the next video